Hi guys, my name's Jordan, and in this ant room tour, I'm showcasing a new, never before seen species here on this channel. And there's some pretty weird looking things. They are the highly mysterious and remarkable spider ants. Spider ants, known scientifically as Leptomyrmex, are native to Australasia and also rare to parts of South America. Their common name of spider ant comes from the fact that, well, they look a lot like spiders, with their extremely long skinny legs and small bodies. Plus, they move in a very peculiar yet calculated motion, very much resembling a daddy long legs or a cellar spider as they're known outside of Australia. These ants are very mysterious in nature and relatively undocumented. Very few observations have been recorded of their habits, which makes keeping and studying a colony of these guys that much more exciting. This is very much uncharted territory. This colony here is quite a large one. Currently they have a few hundred individuals present. They were given to me in person by one of my viewers. His only condition? I just needed to make a video on them. Pretty good deal if you ask me. The ants were originally housed in a simplistic tubs and tube setup. Basically just some water filled test tubes blocked up with some cotton and placed inside a large plastic storage container which had been coated with some fluorine around the edges to prevent the ants from climbing out. This simplistic setup is a very effective way to raise ants. However, it can make observing and documenting certain behaviors quite challenging at times. So using some vinyl tubing, I immediately attached up one of our large sized Waitong nests, which they quickly made use of. Within just a couple of hours, they were all settled in. The plastic tub has now solely become their outworld area, a place where the ants dispose of their garbage and forage for food. Usually before raising a particular species of ant, I will have done lots of research on them and have spent plenty of time out observing them in the wild, which usually gives me a pretty good understanding of their dietary preferences and how best to care for them. But because the information on spider ants is scarce and finding colonies of them is quite rare, at least where I'm from here in Melbourne, when it came to diet, I really wasn't too sure what kind of foods they'd be interested in. So I've been doing lots of experimenting, offering them a variety of sweets and insects. Their favourites so far seem to be raw honey and fresh fruits, especially ripe apples. They're also quite keen on small insects, like crickets. As soon as I place one in, these ants are all over them. I found these spider ants rarely carry food back to their nest. Instead, they consume what they find on the spot, filling up as much as they can before returning back to their nest. Stomachs bulging. All ants have two separate stomachs. Their personal stomach, which they use for their own sustenance, and their social stomach, used for storing food to later be regurgitated to their fellow colony members in a process known as trophallaxis. To communicate that an ant is hungry, they'll stroke another's antennae, and food is then transferred from one ant's mouth to the other's. Much like a mother bird would when feeding her chicks. This method of food transfer and storage means that only a small percentage of workers need to leave the nest to forage for food allowing the queen and young vulnerable ants to remain within the safety of their nest at all times. 
What makes Spider-Man special is that they've taken this adaptation of food transfer a step further. You'll probably have noticed these abnormally large looking ants with abdomens swollen up like balloons. These ants are a specialized caste within the colony known as repletes. These repletes have the sole purpose of storing vast amounts of liquid foods and water. This adaptation helps the ants better survive in times of drought when food and water are hard to come by. Anatomically speaking, these repletes originally didn't develop any differently from their regular worker counterparts. In order for a spider ant replete to be formed, as soon as they are closed from their pupil stage, whilst their exoskeleton is still soft and malleable, they must be rapidly filled up with liquid food or water. So almost as soon as they come to life, often before they've even learnt how to walk, they're filled up via trophallaxis, until they're almost bursting. And then they become a replete. Once they're transformed, they'll spend most of their time relatively immobile, restricted to the deep confines of their nest, where they'll be safest. The workers will often come by to either fill them up or have a quick feed. I found the repletes love gripping onto the ceilings of their nest, where they'll hang upside down, motionlessly. Upon seeing this behavior, I decided to position the nest so it sits up vertically. Now the ants have much more surface area to hang from and can get a better foothold too. Reminds me like a colony of bats. I'm still not entirely sure why they do this. I speculate it could be in order to lap up any moisture which seeps down from above. Shortly after I hydrate their nest with fresh water, I found the repletes are very quick to consume any small droplets which pass them by, as well as any condensation which accumulates over time. These repletes are highly valuable members of their colony, as I've noticed they're meticulously tended to by the workers. They'll use their mouth parts to lick them clean, which helps ward them off from fungal growth and lessens their chance of contracting diseases. But there is one ant in this colony which is even more highly regarded, the queen. But finding a spider ant queen amongst hundreds of her children isn't so easy. The way most ants reproduce is by sending off reproductive male and female ants from their nest. These ants possess wings and so fly off in search of male and female counterparts from neighboring colonies. This event is known as a nuptial flight. Shortly after they mate, the males die off, fulfilling their only purpose in life. And the females usually shed their wings and seek out a good place to begin founding their colony, now as a young queen ant. What makes spider ants unique is that their reproductive females and queens to be are ergatogenous, meaning they don't have wings at all. Only the males do. So instead of flying off for their nuptials, they disperse on foot. Because the queens are wingless, they lack the prominent wing muscles and scarring seen on most other queen ant species after they've shed their wings. This makes spider ant queens especially difficult to distinguish from the regular worker ants. They look almost identical. The only way to tell them apart is that the queen's bodies are ever so slightly larger in frame. And if you look really closely, they'll also have clearly visible ocelli, a cluster of small and simple eyes which are positioned on top of their heads. After a whole week of observing this colony, I managed to track her down. Here she is. Notice how she looks just a little bulkier than the ants surrounding her? Her abdomen is a similar size to that of the replete's, but as you can see, it isn't stretched out as theirs is. And close up, here's those ocelli I was talking about, those simple eyes which she uses to aid herself with navigation. But it goes further than just anatomical features too. I found this particular ant was being actively groomed by her fellow colony members. 
more so than any other ant I've come across. So that made her stand out a little more. This is quite a common habit seen in ant colonies. The queen is, after all, the most important member of the colony. Without her, there'd be no new generations of workers emerging, and so the colony would slowly die off and collapse. So it's vitally important that she's well tended to and remains clean and healthy. From what I've gathered, very little study has been done on spider ant queens. A captive colony with a present queen is an extremely rare occurrence. As far as I'm aware, this is the first ever footage captured of a living spider ant queen. Already, I've noticed some oddities. She's rather unusually active for a queen. Here she is, seen eagerly tending to her larvae. Most of the time, queen ants simply just sit somewhere deep within their nest, conserving their energy and focusing on laying more eggs. So perhaps spider ant queens are not only similar to the workers in appearance, but also in behavior too. Something which requires a bit more study for sure. Although given how large this colony is and how often she moves around, progress could be quite slow on that front. Often if I glance away for just a second, I'll have lost her and may have to spend several minutes trying to find her again, if I even do at all. As the colony has been growing, I decided to attach up an additional nest. I thought I'd try laying this one flat and keeping their original one upright, just as an experiment to see which style they prefer most. So far, they're not too interested in the new nest, but it's still early days. Often, ants can grow quite attached to what's familiar to them and can be very skeptical of occupying new territory. I'm sure it won't be too long until they open up to the idea and start filling it up. I've also offered the ants some increased warmth with this heating cable here. I've positioned it so it's just touching the edges of the nests, so as to provide a temperature gradient throughout, allowing the ants to locate themselves within their preferred temperature levels for both them and their developing brood. And as you can see, there is quite a lot of brood. I'm expecting a huge boom in population very soon. Most of it is in its larval stage, the stage where they develop simple mouth parts and begin feeding and growing. They're relatively immobile and so are entirely reliant upon the ants to come and feed them. They're fed via trophallaxis, the same process the ants use to exchange food amongst themselves. The ants constantly tend to their needs, making sure they're kept well nourished and pristine. Interestingly, I've noticed the ants often like to clump the larvae together into little balls. Each larva possesses these tiny hairs, which seem to be helping them grip more easily together. And strangely, the workers, and often the repletes, tend to just hang around with these clusters in their mouths, with no real sign of wanting to move them anywhere. I'm really not certain why they do this. Perhaps this speeds up relocation time in response to certain dangers where the vulnerable brood could be at risk, like during an attack from a predator, like this specialized ant-eating echidna. Or perhaps a sudden flooding of rainwater. And it may also be to clear up ground space in order to prevent the brood from being buried and allow for a more easy flow of ant traffic. And or perhaps it could make the job of feeding and organizing the brood, according to their size and stage of development, a little easier too. All just speculation. I'm curious to know what you guys think. And what do you think of these spider ants in general? Pretty incredible, right? They certainly are very unique ants. From their strange body structure, to their wingless queens, to their massive repletes, and their bat-like nesting behaviors. I've never encountered anything like them. I haven't been keeping these guys for very long either, so I'm sure there's lots of new discoveries to be made. I'll be sure to keep you guys updated on their progress. 
I plan on rehousing them into a custom design nest fairly soon. Something a little larger with an increased chamber depth and surface area to allow them to hang more easily. So make sure to subscribe to this channel for updates and follow me on Instagram if you want some sneak peeks on all their happenings. A special thanks to my supporters over on Patreon. Thanks so much guys, you're really making these videos possible. And a big thanks to my top tier supporters, John Overton, Nicholas Atkins, Matthew Diamond, and Andy Kerr. Now onto the regular giveaway, where you guys get a chance to win some of our specially designed Ants Australia Formicaria. In last video's giveaway, I asked, which of the ant colonies featured here on my channel is your favorite and why? Personally, it's really hard to just pick one. But if I had to choose, I think it'd be the giant bull ants featured in my last video. They're just so incredibly different to most ants in the way that they navigate through sight. The way that they're like lone wolves hunting their prey in solitude. Their inquisitive, boisterous nature and just generally look like they're from another planet with their huge round eyes and deadly serrated mandibles. Although after recently acquiring and observing this colony, I think these spider ants come in at a very close second. Much like the bull ants, they're just so incredibly unique. So the winner of the contest is... Darcy Weber. His favorites, the trap jaw ants. He loves how weird and different they are from other ants and how fun they are to watch. I'm with you on that one. The speed at which these ants can bite is truly mind blowing. They're definitely up there with my favorites too. So congratulations Darcy, you've just won yourself one of our white tongue nests. For next video's giveaway, I'm putting two prizes up for grabs. Another of our white tongue nests and also my old camera, an Olympus SZ14. It's what I shot all of my early videos on this channel with, so it's seen its fair share of use and is a little banged up. The photo function is a little buggy, but video works perfectly fine. It has a super macro setting, which is pretty decent, allowing you to capture footage like this. I've since upgraded to a DSLR camera now and so rarely use this one anymore. So I figured, why not give it to someone who will? So for a chance at winning the Waitong Nest, simply answer the following. What have you found to be most fascinating about spider ants? And for a shot at winning my old camera, just let me know why you want it and what you plan on shooting with it. Post your answers in the comment section below. I'll pick out two separate comments and announce them as the winners in my next video. As always, thanks so much for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed.